I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to House of Code. Uh, my name is Joe Alessi. I'm the program director here at the Congressional App Challenge. In the Congressional App Challenge, Congress has created the largest series of concurrent coding competitions anywhere in the world. And it's students like you that make this program possible. House of Code is a celebration of the incredible 2021 Congressional App Challenge. The students who are in attendance today are winners of that app challenge. We have hundreds in total, one team from each participating congressional district from the 2021 challenge. Uh, 340 members hosted last year from all 50 states, which was an all time high for us and something that was incredibly exciting. Um, and we had thousands of students compete um, with apps ranging from uh, apps that track senators' stock trades um, to helping cancer patients receive better care for their disease. Uh, 2021 saw a return to something resembling normalcy. Um, many students returned to the classroom and educators were able to provide that incredible hands-on mentoring, allowing everybody to navigate what is a new normal. What has not changed is the incredible commitment of students, teachers, mentors, um, who use the Congressional App Challenge to help improve their communities in the face of countless challenges. Uh, this competition is a reminder of the good that is possible through public service and the incredible work of these young app challengers inspires Congress to never lose sight of what's possible, no matter your age, your background, or your skill set. To get us started this evening, I have the honor of welcoming our first speaker, Representative Jennifer Wexton. Representative Wexton represents Virginia's 10th district in Northern Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley, uh, and prior to her serving in Congress, uh, she served Northern Virginia and Shenandoah as a prosecutor for nearly two decades. Um, she's also kicking off the program because she is one of our co-chairs for 2021 and the 2022 Congressional App Challenge. And so we're thrilled to welcome her today to open up House of Code. Representative Wexton, take it away. Thank you so much, Joe. It's wonderful to be here with everybody. As Joe said, I'm Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton, and I represent Virginia's 10th district in the U.S. House, and I'm co-chair of the Congressional App Challenge for the 117th Congress. I'm so excited to welcome all of you to our House of Code event and congratulate each of you on your incredible work as a part of this year's competition. When Congress established this contest in 2013, the goal was to open up a new opportunity for students in every community across the country to learn about and engage in STEM and computer science. In this eighth annual app challenge, we've had more than 7,000 students submit apps from all 50 states and the US territories. I'm absolutely thrilled by the success of this year's challenge and I'm blown away by the remarkable talent, creativity and passion of all of the students. This year's winning entries include apps to manage flood disasters, promote sustainability, organize college applications, that'll come in really handy for you guys, <laughs> fight sexual harassment and so much more. I'd like to give a special shout out to the winners from my district in Virginia 10, Salman Das, Samir Gavita, Arnav Jain and Vishal Kotha whose app Ichos provides early screening for diseases prevalent in underserved communities. My favorite part of the Congressional App Challenge is seeing young people like all of you take your passion for coding and apply it to some of the most pressing real world issues that we are facing today. Uh, we need more people like you who care about using their knowledge and skills to make their communities around them better. In a world that is increasingly reliant on technology, the skills that you've learned by taking part in the App Challenge will serve you long in the future setting you on a path to success as you seek out the next steps in, your steps in your educational journey and again, eventually begin to chart a new career path. I hope that you and your parents are proud that you're here to showcase your apps before Congress at this prestigious House of Code event. Your hard work, creativity, and commitment into bettering your community represent the best of what our country has to offer. And I know this is only the beginning of what you're gonna be able to achieve. Once again, thank you for being a part of this year's competition and congratulations. I look forward to seeing all the apps. All right, thank you so much, Representative Wexton, for being here and thank you for all you do for the Congressional App Challenge. We really do appreciate it. Pleasure. All right, all right. So uh, we will now move to the next piece of our event today. Uh, and I will have the honor of introducing um, not the representative from Virginia's 10th district, but a constituent in that district. I am one of our esteemed alumni advisory board members. Uh, Maida, can you hear me? Are you, are you on the line here? Yes, I am. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Joe? Uh, thrilled to have you here. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about the work you've been doing with the, um, the Congressional App Challenges Alumni Advisory Board, and then also talk about uh, the rounds of trivia that you're going to be doing for students this evening. So um, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, but let me know if you need anything. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and get things rolling. 
Yeah, of course. Thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. My name is Medha. I'm a junior at NYU studying computer science and the business of entertainment, media, and technology. I won the Congressional Op Challenge back in 2017 when I was a high school sophomore for, as Joe mentioned, Virginia District 10. Um, and I've served on the Congressional Op Challenge Alumni Advisory Board for almost two years now. Last year, I founded a Congressional Op Challenge podcast called Debug, where we interview cool people in tech, talk about app development, tech policy and entrepreneurship. And we've had guests on like YouTuber Yannick Kilcher, CEO Ruth Farmer, and have also been featured in Reinvented Magazine for our work, which is a woman in STEM focused like magazine, which is really cool. Um, it's like Fortune Magazine, but for STEM. Um, and the podcast is available on all streaming platforms. And we're also currently recruiting for the Congressional App Challenge podcast team. So if you're interested in the podcast team, I'll send out a link where you can check it out and also put in your interest in being part of the team. I see that Isabel has already put in a link where you can check out where we're available um, in the chat. And I can also put in um, the podcast team interest form in the chat. Um, basically, if you've participated in the Congressional App Challenge, you're welcome to apply. Um, and so I've put it in the chat for all of the attendees. Um, most excitingly and most relevant to all of you, we're going to be recording a Shark Tank style episode where we'll have one Congressional App Challenge winner from 2021. So one of you guys come onto the podcast and do a mock pitch to a real life VC to get live feedback recorded on the podcast. So what that means is that today we're going to decide which Congressional App Challenge winner team will be coming onto the podcast and literally pitching their app to actual investors and to get real feedback on what it would look like if you guys decided to pursue your app into turning it into a startup. Uh, the way that we'll be deciding on who uh, which team is going to come onto the podcast and who's going to come on is by doing two rounds of trivia. Um, and so there'll be two segments where um, there'll be 10 questions each and it'll pop up on Zoom. And um, yeah, basically whoever wins we're going to, like, whichever representative from which team wins, we're going to invite you onto the podcast to get, like, actual feedback. Um, and just in case, what, like, the team that wins isn't, we have conflict issues, whatever, we'll have a runner-up as well um, that we'll announce uh, later today after we do the two rounds of trivia. Yeah, so like in between speakers, please like stay tuned to make sure that you're participating in the trivia um, so that you could be potentially one of the teams that gets to come onto the podcast. Um, and yeah, Joe, is there anything else before we go ahead and intro the next speaker? Uh, well, um, no, I think we'll go ahead and let you do the introduction and then get everybody ready on their toes after our next speaker, Representative Rodney Davis, who you'll introduce in a minute. Uh, we'll get that first round of trivia going. So I'll toss it back to you. Awesome, perfect. So uh, the first round of trivia, as Joe said, will be right after Representative Rodney Davis gives his remarks. And I'm very, very honored and excited to introduce Representative Rodney Davis, who is currently serving on his uh, fifth term in Congress representing the 13th District of Illinois. Um, Representative Davis serves on the Committee of House Administration, where he is the ranking member, the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, where he is the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Highways and Transit, and the House Committee on Agriculture. Without further ado, I'll pass it over to Representative Rodney Davis, and after that, we'll do the first round of trivia. Hey everyone, I'd first like to say congratulations to all the students who participated in the 2021 Congressional App Challenge. This challenge is a great way for high school students to get engaged and learn more about careers in STEM. I understand how crucial these skills are and I want to continue to encourage students to take an interest and explore these fields. I'd also like to congratulate Jordan Schaefer. He's from Edwardsville, Illinois, and he won the 2021 App Challenge in my district, the 13th District of Illinois. Jordan created an app for virtual reality. It's called Peace of Mind. This app allows the user to transfer to a calming place, wherever that may be. In Jordan's words, the app can be used for meditating or just taking a moment to yourself. I'm looking forward to the 2022 Congressional App Challenge and, and I would encourage all high school students, if you're interested in STEM, you've got to participate. 
Thank you and take care. Uh, now, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our next speaker um, from one of our favorite organizations, uh, from an organization that has done so much to make the Congressional App Challenge possible over the past few years. Uh, we have Alice Seifert here today, who works in federal public policy at Amazon Web Services. And if you are familiar with the App Challenge, if you have been a follower or believer in the App Challenge, you'll know that for as long as the App Challenge has been going on, AWS has been a proponent of the program, a supporter of the program, someone who frankly make this work possible. Uh, so we're so excited to have Ali here today um, to speak with you guys, uh, talk a little bit about their support for the program and other things going on at AWS. Uh, and we are so deeply thankful for all that they do to continue to support the Congressional App Challenge. So I'll go ahead, I'll turn it over to you now. Um, and um, yeah, please take it away. Absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Ala Seifert. I'm a senior manager of public policy at Amazon Web Services in Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here today because the Congressional App Challenge is incredible. AWS has supported the Congressional App Challenge for, I believe, at least the last five years. And as a gold tier sponsor, we've seen the growth of the program uh, over the over the years and seeing massive support from congressional offices. Now I think we're over 340 different members who are working uh, in the App Challenge. And uh, it's been really crucial to see the access and the development um, that, that you all have been doing and the apps you're building. Like it's it, it's truly incredible. And it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty wonderful uh, thing to see across the country. Encouraging students to develop their coding skills and pursue careers in computer science is something that is central to the goal of AWS and something we work uh, to support through sponsoring programs like the App Challenge. Uh, in addition to that, we also sponsor uh, and work with a variety of other educational institutions across the country and throughout the world to uh, both upskill populations and really focus on increased uh, use of cloud and cloud literacy throughout the world. So uh, we're, we're thrilled to be here today and have been a longtime sponsor. Um, we have had the the difficult role of also this year uh, supporting the judging uh, of uh, at least one of the district's app challenges and whoo that was really hard um, y'all have uh, built some some pretty brilliant applications and um, it's it's been really great to participate in that and so we're thrilled to be able to provide the keynote today uh, on the house of code celebration and acknowledge the hard work and skill that this cohort really brought to their apps we're also excited because the app challenge really exemplifies how the cloud can really be a platform for innovation in districts across america and throughout the world um, aws is the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform we offer over 200 fully featured services in data centers around the globe Millions of customers, including the fastest growing startups, largest enterprises, and leading government agencies are all using AWS to lower costs, become more agile, and innovate faster. And I have to say, I've taken a look at many code repos, and I've uh, looked through the GitHub profiles of some of the apps that I was able to find, and I see y'all using some of the services, and I see the really interesting app architectures you've created, and they're, they're pretty great. So a little bit about me and sort of like why I'm, I'm the one from the team here. Um, I am very much a self-taught technologist. I'm an attorney by training, but I taught myself to code in middle school. Back in my day, we had to use services like Microsoft Front Page, or we were just like straight up coding in notebook and writing front end HTML code the old school way. And it's been really exciting to see you all use front end frameworks, rely on open code software, um, rather open source software, different types of uh, front end uh, frameworks. I'm, I'm seeing, I think like Swift, I saw a, little, um, a lot of different um, iOS and Android based sort of like app building packages. It was really exciting to see the different ways that y'all are using the services available to you today as a springboard to really apply it to problems and think about really great app solutions. So a little bit about Amazon's commitment to STEM education. Amazon is super committed to supporting and developing educational initiatives that enable all kinds of STEM learning. The programs we support uh, target learners at all skill levels with different opportunities and access. That means we are making many of our tools available for free and available to the general public. If you yourself are someone who uh, are thinking about diving a little deeper, check out the AWS Educate. Uh, training series. We've got free uh, courses. You can become certified in a variety of, of different AWS services and, and frameworks in a way that I, I think could, could yield lots of uh, success for y'all down the line. And um, we as a company definitely partner with universities who are looking to advance technology offerings, especially as it relates to training in cloud. While we have many 
partners in the space, something that's close uh, to the US Capitol here, since we're talking about House of Code, is our partnership with Howard University just up the road. We're involved in an initiative there to upskill students and build pathways to technical careers with cloud computing courses and training resources. Um, the Howard Initiative will integrate cloud computing concepts into new and existing higher education curriculum. And we give students access to foundational cloud computing courses so that folks can sort of use it as a springboard for innovation, kind of like y'all are doing in this challenge already. So uh, we also have a program called the Cloud Innovation Centers. We have those across the country with a variety of research institutions. One is at Arizona State University. We call that the Smart City Innovation Center. And that's where we use our human-centered design approach, also known as Amazon's innovation working backwards process. We marry that with cloud expertise and global solution platforms to solve pressing community and regional challenges. That center is desired, designed as part of our long-term collaboration between ASU and AWS to improve digital experiences for smart city designers expand technology alternatives by minimizing costs and spur economic and workforce development um, all by bringing more solutions to to the public sector and in across the desert southwest Bradley um, as an Arizona native that is that is my favorite one but I am uh, uh, we do a tremendous amount of, of work throughout the country uh, on a variety of these initiatives. So we see all of these as critical to helping prepare and engage students and those looking to develop new skills because we know that the best way to foster growth and innovation in our field in the coming years is going to be through hands-on training. Once again, like I said, I really, uh, I, I dove deep. I watched a lot of your YouTube videos for the submissions and y'all really knocked it out of the park. It uh, was incredible to see you're using serverless, you're using Lambda, you're using somebody mentioned they used a PCI compliant credit card processor. The fact that y'all know what that is really warmed my heart. That was really wonderful to hear. So I just want to say thank you again to the Congressional App Challenge for having us today and for the opportunity for me to tell you all about Amazon and AWS's initiative initiatives in STEM education. Congratulations to all the winners. You all knocked it out of the park. What a, what a tremendous project. And uh, with that, I will uh, yield the rest of my time. I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right. Well, Ala, thank you so much for being here. And thank you again for all of your support of the program. Um, we're such big fans of the work that you guys do. And um, I am not exaggerating when I say that the work that we do would not be possible without your support. And so thank you so much for being here. Um, and thanks for, for all that you do. Um, so we will be uh, moving on here to our next congressional speaker. Um, but to introduce our next congressional speaker, I have the honor of introducing uh, another supporter of the program um, who's been um, a wonderful ally of the program over the past few years, um, as well as someone who um, created from scratch an organization that he's going to talk about in his introduction. So with that, I'd like to introduce Hansel Lin, um, CEO founder of the Coder School, um, who will be introducing our next congressional speaker. Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Hansel. I am the founder and CEO of the Coder School. Uh, we are, as the name implies, a school for coders. Uh, we have something like 6,500 kids all across the country that come in every week to learn everything from, you know, Scratch to Python, JavaScript, 3D gaming, data APIs, Java, all kinds of other stuff. Um, we are based right here in Silicon Valley. In fact, I'm uh, in Palo Alto right now where our first uh, location uh, was founded. Uh, we've been around for something like eight years, which is a pretty long time in the in the tech years. Um, uh, the last three or so of those years, though, I've had the pleasure and the honor of uh, uh, partnering up with Joe and his team at the Congressional App Challenge. Um, and so I want to start by congratulating all of you guys who won uh, your Congressional App Challenge. It's really an awesome accomplishment. It's awesome for your college uh, uh, resume as well. Um, so that's great. A really uh, virtual uh, fist bump there for you guys. I also want to uh, give a high five to all the folks who out there who uh, submitted an app and maybe didn't win. Uh, right, because right now, actually, to be honest, it's not about winning and losing. It's, it's really it's about learning how to code. Um, technology is just so much, uh, is just that important to our, uh, you know, our economy, our future, you know, sort of everything. And that's, that's why we are looking for you guys, our next generation, uh, to really build that up. If you think about some of the big buzzwords that you might have heard right now, so I don't know, AR, VR, uh, blockchain, NFTs, all that kind of stuff. You know, five years ago, uh, you know, nobody really knew what those terms are. That's how fast tech moves. And so think about five years from now, you know, there's going to be all kinds of new terms, quantum computing or whatever that, um, you know, that, that aren't really, uh, you know, that prevalent right now. And so it's, 
it's uh, your job, you know, as our next generation to take that on um, uh, and create something big out of it. You know, our tagline at our company is learn to code, change the world. Uh, and we really mean that when you learn to code, you have the power to be able to do things that can really change the world. So um, if you want to give back some of that knowledge to, you know, some of the younger kids, hey, come, come, come to one of our locations and, uh, you know, be one of our interns uh, or, or come and be a counselor at one of our summer camps. Or, or if you want to learn more about something, you know, advanced, you know, uh, you know, come by and we can teach you guys uh, that stuff, too. So uh, if you go online, thecoderschool.com, uh, the uh, you know, uh, take a look. Uh, anyway, I'm not here for that. I'm not here to talk about us. I'm actually here to introduce your next speaker. Uh, this guy, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this guy. I look forward to maybe, hopefully, one day meeting him in person. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> um, his name is Ted Liu. Uh, he's done a lot of awesome stuff uh, as, as part of Congress. He represents the western side of LA, where Silicon Beach uh, is. He is actually one of the few uh, folks with a computer science degree in Congress. And so, my understanding is a lot of folks ask him about you know cybersecurity and how the internet works and all that kind of stuff because he's got the tech know-how to do that. Um, he got his degree from Stanford right across the street, so big fan of that. Got a poli-sci degree, went on to Georgetown Law, his magna cum laude, he was in the Air Force. He's got all kinds of great accolades, which I'm not gonna have time to list out here for you, but I do know that he's gonna have some great stuff for you guys. Uh, so everybody on the computer right now, turn your speakers up to 11 um, and get ready for some uh, awesome stuff. Now that I've set that expectation, uh, I'll leave it to uh, my man, Ted Liu. Take it away. Hello, I'm Congressman Ted Liu from California's 33rd Congressional District, which is in Western Los Angeles County. I want to thank the Congressional App Challenge staff and the Internet Education Foundation for everything that you do to make the challenge and the annual House of Code possible. Thank you to Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton and Young Kim for serving as Congressional Co-Chairs of the 2021 Congressional App Challenge. I also want to thank all of this year's participants for showcasing your talent and congratulations to all the winners nationwide for your impressive accomplishments. Over 7,100 students participated in this year's Congressional App Challenge, coding over 2,100 fully functioning apps. As a computer science major myself, I am impressed by all the terrific and creative apps that were developed by students. The winning app from my district which is Megaphone by Angelina Tsuboy and Cooper Say from Chadwick School, is a class forum built to help facilitate connection within the classroom. This app not only helps students and teachers navigate the difficulties presented by distance learning that many have faced over the last couple of years, but also serve as a resource to guide students through questions that they may have. I am a big proponent of the need for more STEM education and I am inspired by all of these students who have committed themselves to creating these amazing and innovative apps. I am proud to represent a district that is home to Silicon Beach, Space Systems Command at Los Angeles Air Force Base, and several institutions for higher education, all of which emphasize the need and importance of STEM education. Thank you all for showing your passion and creativity, and I hope that you enjoy this year's House of Code. All right. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Representative Ted Liu, as well as Hansel Lin, um, one of our supporters. Uh, thanks for those great comments. With that, I would like to continue to move the program forward. And to do that, I'd like to introduce um, Alexis Marks Moser, who is a uh, who works with Apple, um, who is one of our other favorite supporters of the program, who will be introducing our next speaker, Representative Mike Levin. So let me go ahead and let her introduce the representative. Hello, I'm Alexis Marks Moser with Apple. Every day, our team focuses on how to prepare students to be leaders and innovators in this ever-changing world. We are deeply impressed by the creative ways that you are using technology to solve problems that you care about, whether that's racial and social justice, public health, or the environment. When you learn how to code, you're not only learning the language of technology, you're learning new ways to think about and bring ideas to life. Designing, prototyping, and creating apps is a great way to work together to solve problems in your community. 
and the Congressional App Challenge gives you a chance to celebrate your ideas and share those solutions with your peers, families, and the community. You are part of a worldwide community of young developers who are creating apps that do incredible things, like reduce our carbon footprints or connect people with the resources they need the most. Apple was pleased to support that Congressional App Challenge again this year. Congratulations to all of the students who participated. Keep dreaming big and know that we are Apple are behind you and are cheering you on. Because we know that it only takes one idea to change the world. We're so excited to see yours. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Congressman Mike Levin from my home state of California. Currently serving in his second term, Levin sits on the House Committee on Natural Resources, the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis, and the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, where he serves as Vice Chair of the Committee and Chair of the Subcommittee on Economic Opportunity. Levin was raised in South Orange County and attended Stanford University and received his law degree from Duke University School of Law. Prior to being elected to Congress in 2018, Levin fought for climate action while working as an environmental attorney. He also served on the board of the Center for Sustainable Energy and co-founded SustainOC, helping accelerate the transition toward more sustainable power generation and transportation alternatives. As a member of Congress, some of Levin's top priorities are combating climate change, protecting natural resources, and capitalizing on the economic benefits of a sustainable energy future. Congressman Levin has been a tremendous supporter of the Congressional App Challenge, and we're so happy to have him here today. Congressman Levin, over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Congressman Mike Levin, and I want to congratulate all of you for your hard work creating your apps. Your creativity and ingenuity are impressive, and it's encouraging to see so many young people who are building tools that can make our society safer, healthier, and more equitable. I particularly want to highlight the 2021 winner from my district, Tina Mai, who created VAST, or Voice Accessible Story Technology. VAST is an accessibility-driven app that helps youth with visual and learning disabilities write spoken word stories with their voice. Now more than ever, we need more capable young people like Tina and you to pursue computer programming and STEM fields to meet the demands of the changing economy. The technologies and tools you create will shape our future and I am very excited to see what all of you will do next. So congratulations again. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you uh, to Representative um, Levin for being here and thank you to Apple for your continued support of the program. Uh, I now would like to introduce one of my colleagues uh, to handle the next introduction um, as it were. Um, I've got uh, Duncan Barron, who is the Congressional Operations Coordinator here at the Congressional App Challenge, uh, who will uh, do the honor of introducing our next speaker. And so, uh, Duncan, do we have you here? We do. I'm Excellent. here. And th thank you so much, Joe, for the very kind introduction. As Joe said, my name is Duncan, and I am the Congressional Operations Coordinator here at the Challenge. I get the opportunity every day to work with members of Congress and their staff in putting together all of these successful challenges in districts across the country. It's been a pleasure and a privilege taking part and in supporting all of you throughout that process. So without further ado, I have the opportunity to introduce Congressman Hank Johnson uh, from Georgia's fourth district, which encompasses parts of DeKalb, uh, Gwinnett, Newton, and all of Rockdale County. Uh, Congressman Johnson, over the course of his many years of service, has distinguished himself as a substantive and effective lawmaker and as a champion of digital inclusion and the open internet. Uh, Representative Johnson has pushed to empower low-income and minority communities uh, through digital rights, through broadband access, and equality of opportunity online when, it, when uh, he was the ranking member of the subcommittee on regulatory reform and the uh, committee for antitrust. Um, so uh, without further ado, we'd like to introduce the Congressman and give a quick shout out to uh, the winning app from his district from Brockwood High School, Georgia DDS checklist, uh, an app designed to better prepare teens and others uh, visiting the Department of Driver Services in Georgia. So Joe, I'll kick it over to you to introduce Congressman Johnson. All right, all right, let's go ahead and get to Congressman Johnson's remarks. 
Hello, I'm Congressman Hank Johnson, representing Georgia's 4th Congressional District, and I'm honored that you would have selected me to serve as a keynote speaker for the Congressional App Challenge House of Code program. I always enjoy taking part in this annual celebration of recognizing students' hard work, innovation, and natural talents. Young people don't just represent the future, you are the future, and if this event is any indication, our future looks very bright. Officially launched by the U.S. House of Representatives in 2015, the Congressional App Challenge is a nationwide effort which allows students to compete against their peers by creating an app for mobile, tablet, or computer devices. The App Challenge is designed to promote engagement in coding and computer science. Every year, my office holds a district-wide contest to pick the most outstanding app developed by a student in my district. And although we cannot meet with each other this year in person, we can still come together virtually to recognize and celebrate one another. Despite the months of disruption endured by classrooms across the country, all of you have rose above these difficulties to represent your district as you competed with more than 7,000 students across the country in this year's challenge. I'm thankful each year for the outstanding contribution of our nation's young people. I'm proud to announce my winner for this year, Brookwood High School Junior Nihir Patel. That's in Gwinnett County, by the way, so a shout out to all of our public schools in Gwinnett, but particularly Brookwood in Snellville, Georgia. His winning app, Georgia DDS Checklist, was created by using JavaScript and was designed to prepare teens and everyone visiting the DDS Department of Driver Services with all the information they need to obtain a Class CP, Class C, or Class D license. For each type of license, there are checklists that users can interact with to keep track of which steps they have completed and which steps still need to be done. And I think everyone has a story about waiting for hours at driver services departments, so anything that might help alleviate that painful experience has got my support. And by the way, if your state has a motor voter program in place, make sure when you get your license for the first time that you register to vote. Driving is a luxury and a privilege, but our right to vote is sacred, so take that opportunity to register to vote. Science and technology are transforming our world, and I'm a product of, and I'm proud of the students who go above and beyond everyday tasks to compete in the challenge. The App Challenge allows us to showcase some of our nation's brightest young minds as they take on cutting edge technology that is becoming an increasing part of all of our lives. In the past 30 years, the number of jobs in STEM fields has jumped by 79%, and that number is increasing every day. But America needs to step up our game for us to remain competitive in this field, and that's why competitions like the App Challenge are so important to help propel our youth to become our nation's next generation of innovators and creators. Your exceptional talents will surely improve lives and reinforce my optimism about our future. I look forward to bringing House of Code back to the walls of Congress soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you to Congressman Johnson for those remarks. Uh, I want to double check here and see, uh, do we have, Tim, are you here? Uh, our uh, Executive Director of the Internet Education Foundation, Tim Lorden? Yes, I'm here. Yes. All right. Hey, Tim, I know uh, you are going to be doing the next introduction, so I am going to hand it over to you. Oh, thanks, Joe. Um, my name is Tim Lorden, and I'm the executive director of the Internet Education Foundation, which coordinates the House's Congressional App Challenge, and we're very honored to do that. Um, the next speaker that we have is Hadi Partovi, and he is the co-founder and CEO of Code.org. Um, I suspect that everybody on this call knows code.org or has done probably an hour of code uh, with Hadi. Um, we are thrilled to have him as a keynote speaker today. Um, I was going to introduce him and say that on the very day that the, that the House of Representatives convened to the House floor to authorize the Congressional App Challenge um, with House Resolution 77, um, which they voted on and passed 
uh, to authorize the app challenge. There was something like four, 404 votes to three uh, to authorize it. Um, on the very, very same day, uh, Hadi and his, Hadi and his, co his brother um, launched code.org. But I'm not going to tell you the date because that was the trivia number one trivia question and you don't know the answers to it yet. So I'm not going to give it away. But it was a long time ago. And over those years, um, Hadi has worked tirelessly um, to, to promote code.org, computer science. He is one of the main leaders in America when it, in the world when it comes to promoting computer science education. Um, oh, tens of millions of students have done their um, Hour of Code, including myself. Um, they are in you know, tons of countries, all 50 states, and they work tirelessly to do that. So a real hero to us. Um, I, it, Hati, so I'll, tell, I'll let, it, let you take it from here. Hi, my name is Hadi Partobi. I'm the founder and CEO of Code.org and the creator of the International Hour of Code movement. I want to offer my congrats to all of the winners of this year's Congressional App Challenge. You've all picked up on something really important. You know that computer science is increasingly being used just about everywhere, from unlocking mysteries in medicine, to creating our favorite movies and TV shows, to exploring the farthest reaches of space. Our mission at Code.org is to make sure that every student has access to computer science because we believe your generation will use it to do incredible things, things I can't even imagine. It's so inspiring to see that you're already cultivating the superpower and building apps that help your communities. Again, congratulations and keep at it. All right, okay. Thank you very much to Hadi and the folks at code.org for um, the celebrating this year's Congressional App Challenge winners, um, as well as all they do to make computer science accessible for so many people, uh, not just in the United States, but around the world. Um, so uh, I have an incredibly exciting guest up next, but before I do that, I wanna take a few questions because I know we've gotten some in the chat. I appreciate everybody hanging with us during uh, some of our uh, technical snafus earlier with those gray boxes. We have those sorted out now, um, so, so that should be all good. Thank you guys for alerting us to that. Um, we have a question from someone in the audience who asked, uh, they said, hey, does AWS provide free services to people involved in the app challenge? Uh, they say, I'm broke. And for a lot of students, I'm sure that that's the case. Um, so AWS does provide a lot of uh, services to students. And if you send us an email, we'd be happy to get you connected um, and make sure that you get set up with everything um, that is eligible and free to use for um, students through the AWS platform. Um, I also had another great question um, from somebody in the audience who asked, as winners, do we get any opportunities such as internships at these organizations or any other programs? Uh, and if that's your question, then I've got a really great opportunity for you. Um, many of you may have noticed House of Code is not one day, it's, it's three days long. And during those three days, we have our STEM Inspiration Social. Um, that takes place tomorrow on Thursday, April 21st. And that will be the perfect opportunity to talk to organizations who can talk to you about a future in computer science. And so um, if you're an App Challenge winner, you have an opportunity to RSVP for that. The invite is in your inbox and you can still RSVP. We're going to take RSVPs all the way up to the event tomorrow. So uh, make sure you get RSVP'd for that. And that'll be a great opportunity for you to speak to some organizations that might be able to provide a future in computer science and STEM spaces. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce another member of our alumni advisory board. Um, Isabella Hothschild is uh, not just a, a member of our alumni advisory board, but also very involved in a number of other organizations, including the organization whose founder we're going to hear from next. So I will pass it to her to introduce herself and then introduce our next speaker. Yeah, thank you for the introduction to my introduction. So, um, hi everyone, my name is Isabella and I'm honored to be here today. I'm originally from San Francisco and I'm currently studying computer science and economics at Dartmouth. First off, I just wanna say congratulations to all the winners. You've coded such impressive and impactful apps and I'm so excited uh, for all of you to have the chance to show it off on Friday. Congratulations, truly. Three years ago, I attended my first House of Code as a Congressional App Challenge winner. And today I'm excited to be here as the Director of Partnerships on the Alumni Advisory Board. I have the privilege of introducing someone who needs no introduction, Carly Kloss, influencer, coder, and philanthropist, and self-described business model. My experience at Code with Klossy 
sparked my interest in tech and inspired me to major in computer science. I also, funnily enough, ended up submitting my Code with Philosophy final project to the Congressional App Challenge back in 2018. So I literally would not be where I am today speaking at this event without that life-changing experience. Side note, applications are open until Sunday for summer 2022. If anyone is interested in Code with Philosophy or know any female non-binary or trans students who would love a, some summer experience with, code, with computer science. And with that, I'll leave it to Carly. Hello everyone. It is such an honor to be virtually here with you all today. I'm Carly Kloss, tech nerd and founder of Code with Classy. A special shout out to all of our amazing scholars who are watching this right now. Coding is the language that connects our present and our future. It's the medium in which the stewards of our future make voices heard, bring ideas to life, and initiate empowering change. I wanna take a special moment and honor your hard work and dedication to reach this moment right now. And I cannot wait to see all that you all go on to do in this world. I'm proud of you. Uh, so, Duncan, it's back to you. Uh, you've got our next introduction, so I'll hand it off. Are you uh, ready to go over there? I am ready and glad to be back. And first, I want to give a huge shout out to Maida for running trivia tonight and to all of our alumni advisory board members who helped make this program possible. But without further ado, I have the chance to introduce Representative John Larson. Uh, Congressman John B. Larson proudly represents Connecticut's first district, and he's now in his 12th term, where he serves on the Influential House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, where he's had the opportunity to be a strong advocate for his district students and all of those who had the chance to participate in the Congressional App Challenge over his many years of service. Born and raised in federal project housing in Mayberry, uh, a village in East Hartford, uh, John is fond of saying that he's a product of public housing, public education, and public services. This in part is what brought him to the challenge as he understood that the promise of programs such as these uh, has for uh, young coders from all walks of life. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn it over to the Congressman for his remarks. Hi, this is Congressman John Larson, and I'm joining you tonight from Connecticut's first congressional district. It is an honor to recognize the accomplishments of the winners of the Congressional App Challenge from across the nation tonight at this year's House of Code Conference. I had the pleasure of visiting Glastonbury High School to award the winners from my district, Natesh, Jode, and Raul for their app, they rightfully named Mentality. They used the coding skills they learned both in class and as part of their school's coding club to provide mental health tips and resources. During this pandemic, which has caused such great stress and hardship for our country, their innovation could not have been timelier. It is remarkable to see the talent at display from all of our winners across our great nation. I hope that you'll all enjoy this year's virtual conference, and I hope we can all gather together in person soon. God bless you. God bless America. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman Larson. Um, continues to host a great app challenge and uh, always someone who's a big supporter of the program. Uh, recently talked about us uh, during uh, a committee hearing, which was incredibly exciting. And you can find clips of that on our Twitter feed. Uh, so we're going to move along with the program. I've got another supporter of the program up next uh, and someone who did an incredible job um, addressing the Congressional App Challenge House of Code audience last year. Um, don't want to spoil anything, but does a great job again with his remarks this year. Uh, leads an organization as president um, that many of you may one day find uh, yourself affiliated with or interested in joining. Um, and they've got lots of great programming um, that we'd love to get you guys involved in as well, including a really fun event in just over a week um, that we'll be sending out to our alumni listserv. So up next is Morgan Reed, who is the president of the App Association. 
The app association represents more than 5,000 app makers and connected device companies in the mobile economy. So these are exactly the folks that you're interested in hearing from. Uh, their members are some of the most amazing innovators and leaders in the space. They have been great allies in helping us host uh, different webinars and different mentoring sessions for students over the years. And they're one of our favorite organizations to work with. So I will go ahead and pass it off to Morgan for his remarks. I'm Morgan Reed, president of ACT, the App Association, and I'm excited to join everyone here to celebrate the amazing work that you've done with the Congressional App Challenge and the House of Code competition. We are so proud of what you have created, and we know just exactly how much work you all put into it to take your idea and make it something real. The hours of designing, debugging, and testing are long, but it's that hard work that led to all these amazing, innovative, and inspiring pieces of technology. But the work doesn't stop when the Congressional App Challenge is over. In fact, it's just begun. I'm sure that each one of you had a million ideas to improve the app you wrote, and you all wish you had just a little bit more time to get that one remaining bug. The good news is you are not alone. Our members are innovators and problem solvers just like you. They create technology that has transformed the way we live, work, play, heal, laugh, and grow. And in a few short years, or in some cases, a few months, that's gonna be you. You are the future and your dreams are going to create the life-changing technology like our member company for all abilities. It's a two-person team based in Texas that uses custom technology to empower neurodiverse folks at school and at work. For All Abilities is just one example of the thousands of members we have across all industries in the app economy. Now, I get that across all industries in the app economy sounds like annoying corporate speak, and it kind of is, but what it really means is being a coder, developer, innovator means that you can choose your own adventure at work and at life. In our economy right now, there are more than 500,000 unfilled jobs. Jobs that are available today, not potential jobs, not supposed jobs, but jobs today that are unfilled and they cross the gamut. And it's really not an overstatement. We have members like Bad VR in Manhattan Beach that's creating technology, embracing virtual reality, but not for games and not in the Facebook metaverse, but to reimagine the way that we see, work, and understand data. We have members like Dawn Audio in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They're in the music space, creating the technology that's empowering your future favorite artist. We have members like Can Spinach in Cincinnati, relatively small dev shop, but it's creating technology for the biggest names out there, from Rock Nation to the Miami Dolphins. We have members like MacGyver Tech in Philadelphia. They're one of the leaders in blockchain, crypto, NFTs, Web3, and every buzzword that you are hearing now and that your parents are currently ignoring. The bottom line is our members are embracing any and all tools to build the next generation of technology. And that includes and embraces culture that celebrates our differences and empowers every person that it touches. And not to mention, <laughs> these jobs give you the ability to make a ton of money right out of school. And the best part is, you can work remotely. Many of you will find employment that allows you to be a true digital nomad, able to explore the world and innovate from places you've never imagined or always just wanted to visit. Or maybe it gives you the ability to stay in your local community and really be a leader and inspiring others to grow the community that you grew up in, to become the place you want it to be for the next generation and beyond. Whatever you choose, it's your decision. But one thing I know for sure is that we can't wait to see where you go from here. So thank you very much for the apps that you built. But I also wanna say thank you to all the sponsors and friends and participants of the Congressional App Challenge. Without you, we wouldn't have the best thing about our industry. It's our members, our developers, and you. Thank you. Okay, thank you to Morgan and the team at the App Association or ACT, the App Association for being incredible partners in this. And I mean, listen to all the opportunities he put forward. Uh, they're one of our favorite organizations to work with. And as I mentioned, they're hosting an event, I believe on Wednesday of next week. And so we're gonna have details to you guys who are interested in checking that out over email in the next day or two, be a great opportunity to connect with them, to learn more about their organization um, and all the great work that they do. So uh, up next, I've got a relatively new supporter of the program, but someone who's been incredibly influential um, in the tech space, um, as well as the thinking about the responsibility of tech space. Um, so uh, our new supporter of the program this year is um, Omidyar Network. And Omidyar Network's global mission is to tackle the biggest and most intractable challenges facing the planet in the decades ahead. 
Um, they may be an organization you're familiar with. If not, they have huge, they have a huge policy shop and they have a huge group of folks who work to improve the way that tech functions, to improve the opportunities for folks around the world. Um, really an incredible group that you can uh, learn a lot about and, and have an opportunity to learn from. Today, joining us, we have Midiar Network's first Senior Vice President of Programs, Michelle Lawrence Jawando. Um, and Michelle will be talking a little bit about their support for the program and what's up next for their organization. Congratulations to all of the winners of the Congressional App Challenge. I am so impressed by the creativity, by the smarts of all of the participants. And I, of course, have to give a very special shout out to the winners from my congressional district, Maryland's 8th District, Ornish Shatari, Charles Wang, Botan Parkinjay, and Solomon Nahin. These students at Walter Johnson High School created Corona Safe, an app that allows people to be more informed about the world around them. I am so proud of you students. Congratulations and excellent job. Who am I giving you these hearty congratulations? Well, my name is Michelle Jawando, and I am the Senior Vice President of Programs at Omidyar Network. Omidyar Network is a social change venture that reimagines critical systems and the ideas that govern them. And we work to build more inclusive and equitable societies all around the globe. Our focus is on three of the biggest issues that drive opportunities and challenges for our future. Our economy, belonging and connection, and finally, technology. It's that last focus on responsible technology that led us to be a proud sponsor of the Congressional App Challenge. We know and believe deeply that tech can be a force for good and can unlock amazing potential. And we know that the people who participated in this challenge will be the ones that will bring our technology ecosystem into better balance. As someone who worked on the Hill for many years, one of the things I appreciate most about the Congressional App Challenge is that it brings together members of Congress from across the aisle, something we need more of these days. The bipartisan nature of this event underscores our shared commitment to ensuring the next generation will thrive. Again, congratulations to all of the winners and to all who participated. We thank you. Omidyar Network is honored to have been a part of this event. Good luck and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you to Michelle and thank you to Omidyar Network for supporting our program and, and helping us make this possible. Um, they've been uh, such a great ally. They've, they've only been, uh, they're a new supporter of the program, but they've been fabulous to work with this year and we hope to work with them for many, many years to come. Uh, so uh, there's a couple more questions I wanna just get to before we get to our final few speakers. Um, one, I love this group and I love working with app challengers because you guys are so on the ball. Every time somebody, uh, you know, we had a form go out and there was a question about whether you guys could access it, you guys were on that right away. And so it sounds like we got the permissions worked out for that. For those who are interested in checking out the podcast and trying to get involved in it, that form is now live. So hopefully you guys can access that. Um, love that you guys are very quick to let us know uh, if there's any questions you guys have or, or anything you guys spot from your side. Um, Jack asked if it's possible for um, people in separate states to be on one team for the app challenge. Uh, you can read our rules on the website for the 2022 app challenge. But yes, broadly speaking, as long as 50% of the team lives or attends school in the district you're competing in, you are eligible. Um, someone asked uh, another question about um, trying to get involved with the VC pitch on the podcast, if there's another way to do that. Um, so 
for this year, we don't have a plan to do that, to have another way in, or at least for this next podcast episode. But if there's big interest from students, we'd love to make that something uh, that we do more of in the future. And so um, if, if that is something you guys are interested in, you know, please let us know. And, and we'll make sure that we work that into alumni programming, uh, as well as programming for App Challengers next year. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to jump to our next speaker, um, someone who's really fun to work with. They probably don't need a huge introduction from our side, at least for the students here. Um, and that's Replit. Um, Replit, for those who are unfamiliar, is an online IDE. I'm making it super easy and super accessible for anybody to get involved in coding. And our next speaker is Lena Sawyer from Replit, who cracked us up earlier today with an incredible uh, tweet regarding getting involved with the program. She mentioned there's a bunch of representatives or reps speaking today. Replit is among them, sort of hiding out in the background as, as, a, as a tech company um, among many members of Congress. And so we're excited to welcome Lena today um, for her remarks. And, and we thank Replit for all they do to help support the Congressional Op Challenge and make coding possible for people, um, even if they don't have the background or the skill set and they're just getting started. So uh, with that, Lena, take it away. Hello, Congressional App Challenge. My name is Lena Vu Sawyer, and I lead community at Replit. If you're not familiar, Replit is a browser-based coding platform where you can build, run, share, and collaborate on coding projects in seconds for no cost. Our mission is to bring the next billion coders online, and we're really proud to partner with the Congressional App Challenge to make computer science more fun, accessible, and impactful for young people. It's also been incredible to see the, the impact that young people have been making with their computer science projects for the Congressional App Challenge. I want to congratulate each of the winners this year and give a special shout out to those of you who used Replit to build your projects. Folks like Natish Kalangi, Rahul Jayachandran, Jude Ramanan, and William Sela all used Replit for their winning apps. If you also built with Replit, please share it with me. I would love to check it out and share it with our community. And even more, I'd like to congratulate every single one of you who participated for taking a chance, experimenting with something new, and sharing something truly powerful with your communities. If you'd like to learn more about Replit, like how to get involved in our upcoming hackathons, and how to build your own site in minutes, come join us at the STEM Inspiration Social tomorrow. Whether you're already an enthusiastic programmer or you're at the beginning of your journey, I wish you all happy coding and I hope to see you on Replit. So thank you very much, Selena. And she did a great tease there. Next, uh, tomorrow, the next piece of House of Code is our STEM Inspiration Social and they'll be involved. Um, so we're excited to have them there for that. So if you uh, have an interest in, in having a conversation with Lena and her team, if you want to learn more about how Replit works, if you want to, uh, I think they're going to even be giving us an opportunity to work together um, so we can all play with a single Replit, we can fork it and, and have a bunch of fun and, and uh, work through it so that everybody builds um, a program together cohesively um, building toward one thing. And so we're super excited about that and, and we're, we're thrilled to have them there. Um, we do have one more speaker this evening, but I believe we're waiting on them to join. And so um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Q&A panel before we get to our final speaker for the day. Um, and so let me take a look and see what we got. Um, so Zhu mentioned uh, they'd love the opportunity um, to get involved and try to try to get their app in front of investors. And if that's something that you guys are, are really interested in, um, we can definitely make sure that that's something that we provide to you guys in the year ahead. Uh, we've recently launched an alumni network, and that's been a major part of what we're doing is trying to make the Congressional App Challenge an experience that we can have go beyond your time in the classroom, uh, in your time specifically competing. So building your apps, it's a great opportunity to get involved, obviously. But beyond that, we want this to be a network that you guys can use to um, to, to pitch your ideas in the future, to work collaboratively with other people. Um, and, and this is sort of a springboard for, you know, all that's possible as we go forward. Um, so the Congressional App Challenge, of course, it's a competition for middle and high school students, but it's also a burgeoning alumni network where we can get you guys involved, we can get you guys set up with other folks from around the country to take your ideas and really to do, um, you know, to, to, to go to the next level, whether that's while you're in college or as you transition into your your professional career, anything else, wherever you guys go, uh, we hope that the Congressional App Challenge can continue to stay, um, to be involved and to, um, yeah, and to be something that's important in your life. And so 
Um, yeah, as you may notice, I'm doing a little bit of stalling here. So we, we are waiting on our, our final guest, but thank you guys for, for bearing with us as we as we work through the technical difficulties. We know um, we're doing this live. And so there's always pieces of that that can be a little bit um, confusing or, or take up a little bit of time. So we'll get you there in just a minute. Um, so just bear with us. You know, in the meantime, while we're waiting on our, our final guest, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, some of my favorite parts about this year's app challenge and the app challenge in general. And so the Congressional App Challenge is really an incredible initiative. It's unparalleled in terms of um, things that exist in the House of Representatives, um, initiatives that exist nationwide to try try to reach not just students who have an interest in computer science and coding, um, but students who maybe wouldn't have an opportunity to get involved otherwise, to be honored, to, to be, um, you know, to, to see themselves, see their name, see their app put up, be mentioned by a member of Congress. It's a really big deal to students. And frankly, for us, that's one of our favorite parts about the program. Uh, one thing that we loved about this year's app challenge is we saw a big increase in the number of students who participated together as part of a team. Um, and after a year 2020, where many students did their coding alone, um, we had the fewest teammates on record. Uh, you know, it was just, it was, it was a great year in terms of the apps that students made, but we didn't see all the collaboration that we had become accustomed to. And seeing that come back this year was something that was incredibly exciting for us. We really loved, um, we had a wonderful experience looking through the winning apps. We always do each year. Um, and I know I've been talking a lot about a lot of different apps that I saw this year. The app, uh, specifically the student who put together an app to help uh, monitor stock trades of senators, I thought was really clever. Uh, we had some students who put together an app to help students um, see when bills and language and markup had changed, not just for students, but for members of Congress. Um, there was so much civic good that went on this year, which was incredibly exciting. So um, one of our favorite years on record, you guys never fail to inspire us. And, and, and we can't thank you guys enough for, um, you know, for your commitment to inspire not just yourselves, but but members of Congress. And so with that, I do have our, our final guest here. Um, speaking of members of Congress, uh, we have uh, Congresswoman Young Kim as our final speaker of the day. Uh, she is proud to represent California's 39th district, which impl includes parts of Los Angeles, Orange, and San Bernardino County. Uh, she's an immigrant, small business owner, community leader, and a mother. Uh, Congresswoman Kim is proud to be one of the first Korean American women to ever serve in Congress. And she's also proud to be one of the co-chairs of the Congressional App Challenge. And so we opened up with uh, Congresswoman Wexton, uh, one of our co-chairs. We are closing with our other. And so now I'd like to welcome Representative Young Kim um, to the Congressional App Challenge floor. Thank you for being here and, and take it away, Congress Congresswoman. Thank you so much for the introduction. I uh, represent California 39th Congressional District. My district represents parts of LA, Orange, and San Bernardino counties. And I'm really honored to serve as one of the co-chairs of the App Challenge and join you virtually like this. Even though I'm challenged, I got to look out for the street I'm driving on. Uh, but uh, we celebrate your outstanding work in this um, year's competition. Thank you everyone who joined and participated in uh, to, uh, this year's uh, competition. As a member of the um, House Committees on Science, Space and Technology, I also serve on small business and foreign affairs. So I know how crucial coding skills are for students to get good paying jobs and for America's future competitiveness. This app challenge gives students of all backgrounds and from all across the nation, the opportunity to move from being passive consumers of technology to being active creators of technology. So coding and technological skills are now a critical form of literacy and it will only become more important in the economy of the future. So I'm really excited that this year, it was the App Challenge's biggest year yet. And I'm informed that 340 members of Congress participated and more than two, oh, 7,000 students created over 2,000 successful apps. That's remarkable. So to all the students that are turning in tonight, please know that I'm deeply happy and appreciative, incredibly proud of you for challenging your skills and working to find solutions. You blew us away with what you were able to uh, you know, achieve so far. 
and you tackle some of our most complicated challenges and reflected your commitment to making our world a better place. And I want to give a big shout out and talk about one of my um, students in the district, Dia uh, Sweetheart. She's from Troy High School in Fullerton, and she's the winner of App Challenge for my district. You know, she lost a close relative to a brain tumor. And after that, Dia was inspired to provide others with direct access to vital health services by creating an app called the Aura that uses artificial intelligence machine learning to predict the di uh, disease di uh, prognosis of glioblastoma patients. You know, with ideas like Dia's, I know our future is bright. So I wanna thank all of you for taking the time to participate. And I look forward to seeing what all of you will accomplish in the future. Thank you so much for having me. All right, uh, thank you so much Congresswoman for joining us and thank you for all you do to help us, um, you know, raise the program up in Congress, spread the word. Uh, the work that you've done as a co-chair has been amazing and we can't thank you uh, enough for it. And so thank you for joining us this evening and um, thanks for all you do. Thank you. Best wishes to everyone. Thanks. So um, we have now reached the end of the program. I just have a few notes for you guys. Um, I've been getting some questions about, hey, what are the next steps with trivia? Look, we had some technical difficulties earlier with those gray boxes that popped up. We don't want to risk another technical hiccup. And so we're going to calculate the scores after the event. And we'll be emailing everybody in terms of all the students um, who participated today to let you guys know who the winner is. Uh, we're also going to post it on social media. And so you can look out for it on our Instagram page, on Twitter, on Facebook. We'll let you guys know who the winning team is there. So we should have that up for you guys tomorrow. We just wanted to make sure that you guys had a smooth experience. So just bear with us while we get those scores together and, and you can look out for that then. Um, someone asked, will there be a recording of this? Yes, absolutely. Um, we'll be posting the recording of this to our YouTube channel as well. We're currently live streaming on YouTube and so that video file will be available too. Um, that way, if you wanna share this with your friends, family, maybe you wanna go back and grab a screenshot of your app when it cycled through, we can make sure you've got an opportunity to do that. Um, as I said earlier, um, we do have more to come in House of Code. And while today was incredibly exciting as a kickoff, uh, there are two more days with two more wonderful events that we hope many of you guys will join us for. Uh, tomorrow, if you are a Congressional App Challenge winner from 2021, you are exclusively invited to our STEM Inspiration Social that Lena was talking about earlier. That's where you can interact directly with some of these organizations, um, ask them questions about futures in computer science, and then chat with other App Challengers about things that interest you for your future. Um, so RSVP for that if you haven't done so already. And then whether you're an App Challenge winner, an App Challenge participant, a parent, a friend, someone who just loves computer science, uh, we have a great event for you Friday. It is the culmination of House of Code. It is our student demos. So this year we had hundreds of students from across the country code winning apps. And those students will be demonstrating those winning apps to the general public on Friday. They'll be demonstrating in two sections, um, both the uh, Eastern cohort, which will be at 4.30 Eastern, and then the Western cohort, which is made up of anyone from Central Time West, um, will be presenting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, students will be demonstrating their apps to the general public. If you RSVP'd for this, then you're already RSVP'd for that. We hope that you guys will join us, check those student demonstrations out and help us um, close out the 2021 Congressional App Challenge in the best way possible with an incredibly exciting set of student demonstrations on Friday. So with that, we've reached the end of the road for tonight. Uh, I wanna thank everybody, all of our guests for joining us, the supporters of the program, the friends of the program, the members of Congress who are hosting these Congressional App Challenges, as well as our team here that helped put this together. Um, appreciate all you guys for joining us this evening too. All of you App Challenge winners have done an incredible job and we can't thank you guys enough for the work that you do to inspire Congress um, to see the future in computer science and STEM fields. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you all. I hope everyone has a great evening and we cannot wait to see many of you tomorrow and Friday for our, the next pieces of House of Code. Have a great evening, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you then.